Alright, hopefully this is live. And it is, finally, after two failed attempts. Okay, so we have a few machines to take a look at today. These are going to be kind of boring ones that I won't make the cut for a um, dedicated video. Uh, so it's perfect time for perfect type of repair for a stream. So the first one on the list is going to be an 820. Um, 820. 01700, the big dreaded 01700, um, that does not turn on after liquid to the CD3217's post ultrasonic cleaning. So this is after ultrasonic cleaning. Um, so let's let, take a look at another scope and see what we can find on the board. So I'm going to switch over to my microscope, which is hopefully working. And it is. So let's look at the area that was liquid damaged. There's also a little bit near this 2v5 NAND regulator. But it doesn't, I mean, we can see the cap is corroded, but that doesn't look too bad. So, let's look at our CD3217s. Alright, so a slight amount of corrosion by them. Just very, very slight on these capacitors. It looks like the solder joints on these capacitors are fractured. Because you could tell um, by that little reflect reflecting of light right there. So the first thing I want to try is a little flux and heat right here and see if it turns on before I do that. Also this resistor there is a little bit corroded. Nothing too terrible though. But before I do that, let's actually see what this does. Um, what it actually reads on the USB amp meter because I want to get a baseline of what we're trying to repair. Um, the tech mechanic, I have had facial hair like this for many months. I just haven't shaved my neck in a while, in a week. Whew. Peter, that is Caleb. Oh, that's Thank you for choosing his new nickname though. Um, I need a USB-C. Caleb, do, do you have one of these? I need, I need a USB-C. You took mine. I did not. Yeah, you did. So once we get a USB-C port, actually it's right here, here's one. I have my USB-C port, I'm going to plug it into the board, I'm going to see what happens. So, it's plugged into our USB-C port, let's see what our amp meter does. <coughs> All right, 20 volts, 0 0.04, 0 0.03. This is not looking good. When these boards do this, it is not a good thing. 0 0.02, 0 0.03, whatever. So when these particular boards do this, it could mean pretty much anything. The way it's kind of cycling makes me think maybe a short somewhere, 0 0.11, 0 0.5. It, this can mean a bad CD3217, it could mean something wrong with the T2, it could mean something wrong with the PCH, it could be a PMU issue, it could literally be anything. And the main concern here is the fact that there was corrosion on our 2v5 NAND regulator, which could mean that our NAND is dead. If our NAND is dead, the machine will not boot because it needs bridge OS. And if the NAND is dead on this, this is very bad because they need data. So I'm going to measure PP bus, and if PP bus is 12.3 volts, that means, okay, something is getting very hot on the board over here. So something, I'm just feeling around, something is very, very hot right here. So I can't tell what it is, so I'm going to go get out the thermal. And it's probably the 2v5 NAND regulator, but let's see what PP bus is. So PP bus G3 hot is measuring... 12.63 volts, so that's good. Bridge OS is trying to boot. 2v5 NAND is what? I'm going to guess you're low. Yep, 0 0.04. 0 0.9. 0 0.7. All right, so I have hope for the NAND, but I need to figure out what's actually getting hot. So I'm going to unplug this before I kill anything. And I am going to open my thermal and see if I can see anything. Now, with any luck... This will cooperate, 
and work on OBS, but oftentimes it does not cooperate and it does not work in OBS when OBS is open. So we're going to hope for the best, and if not, you're going to have to believe me that what I say is shorted is actually shorted. So let's try and turn this on and see what we can see. Jim is here. All right, so hopefully this appears on my screen. And it doesn't. Imagine that. All right, come on. Try one more time. Nope, it doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, so what I can do is let's put a little alcohol. Actually, acetone would be better for this because acetone evaporates really, really fast. All right, so we have some acetone right here. The board is not on yet, and you can see it's already evaporating. But I'm going to plug this in, and you're going to see how quickly this acetone evaporates around the chip. But it evaporates so quick anyway. So let me turn it on, then I'm going to douse it. Now acetone is fairly non-conductive, so I don't have to worry about it hurting anything. So I'm going to plug in the board. And our board is turning on. We're going to give it a second. And we are going to see the acetone evaporate around the 2V5 NAND regulator, most likely, if I'm right. Usually right, so. All right, we're back at 5 volts, 0 0.3. Look at that. See that? See how on this chip right over here didn't evaporate, but on this guy, instant evaporation. So I'm going to guess this is our problem here. So I'm going to remove this. Now, what's really, really scary about this is this could have failed in a way that sent 20 volt or tw uh, PP bus, so 12.63 volts to our NAND. And if that happened, that would be very, very bad. So what we're going to do, we're going to get this guy off, and we're going to check resistance to ground on SSD 2v5 NAND. It should be well within the kilo ohms. If it's not in the kilo ohms, if it's like 15 ohms or something, that is bad. This device is garbage because the NANDs are dead. This is for data. And yeah, it's done. All right, this is off. I'm going to do my prep for a new chip. Clean up this flux. And now the verdict will be, depending on this ohms reading, this device is trash or it is not trash. So I'm going to get my multimeter, put it in ohms mode, and we are going to hope that SSD 2v5 NAND is not low. And it is. The verdict is. 25 mega ohms to ground. So this SSD survived. So we're going to get a new chip on here. Um, I want to do a little flux and heat around our CD3217s. And then this is good to go after a little ultrasonic bath. Um, and then we're good. So let's grab a new chip. Good old TPS62180, YZ, YFZs, or whatever they're called. I don't know. Let's 
get this out of the reel. Little bit of flux. That is soldered. Now these CD3217s here, they don't look bad. They just have some, pr like just some, what looks like cracked solder joints. These would most likely work, but I don't want to take a chance. I'm just going to put a little flux and heat on these guys and just reflow them just to rejuvenate the solder connections under it. I always say when I say reflow, this is totally different than reflowing a CPU. Reflowing a CPU is very, very bad. What in this case, we're just merely trying to rejuvenate the solder joints under here because they are on these capacitors, they're kind of worn down. The capacitors are physically going to be fine, but the solder joints under them may not be. So I'm going to heat until I see the chip move a little bit. Like that. Just like that. And we're done. So I could get my iron and make those joints look a little bit prettier now. Hi, John. You're not going to wish bad luck on me here. I do not have a dead NAND. We even had a dead SSD 2v5 NAND regulator. And this is not going to be a dead NAND. You're going to watch and see. This is going to boot perfectly. Who am I kidding? John is always right. I made a bridge. There we go. Those look nice and pretty now. And now we are going to hope and pray this boots. Or at least gives us something better than 20 volts 0 0.02. It is not uncommon for these boards to be in recovery mode after something like this happens. So we're going to hope and pray that it is able to be restored if it is in recovery mode. And there you go. This should be fixed. I am going to um, take a break real quick. I have to handle a phone call.
about that. <laughs> Long phone call. Who said anything about that? All right. Yes, OWCSSDs are not very good. Caleb, this is fixed. I fixed it. Yeah, just ultrasonic, the tip of the board that I reworked on. Um, and then this is good. So OWC. People have this inherent belief that OWC SSDs are the best, that they're made for Mac. They're excellent. That's not the case. OWC, to my knowledge, I don't, I don't know this for sure, but I don't believe they make anything. It's all just outsourced from China. But the actual NANs and these, the controllers on them are not very good, and they tend to fail a lot. And that's kind of an understatement. So it's kind of... If we get a machine that has an OWC SSD that's having startup issues, anything like that, nine times out of ten it's the SSD. So I do not recommend an S uh, OWC SSD. Um, what we use here, so we used to use the we used to use um, o, um, OEM poles. Now OEM poles are were the best option, but now almost all the OEM poles you could buy on the market have. 10,000 plus hours and are mostly used up. So what we're using now is SanDisk or Western Digital NVMe SSDs. The SN550s what we use right now and they're very good. Um, we haven't had any issues with them yet. So that's what we're using currently. I used to use the OEM, uh, OEM poles, but OEM poles, like I said, they're pretty much used up. Uh, given this point, most of them are anywhere from five to almost 10 years old so you know I, I just don't trust them anymore and those I have had issues with I have have had uh, I have bought OEM pull SSDs that are pretty much failing so our current pick is uh, SanDisk or Western Digital SN 550s with an adapter they work well they're reliable no compatibility issues so that's what we're using currently but if you have an OWC SSD in your MacBook one back up your data get something else as soon as you can it's going to fail on you. It's We see so many issues with them. and um, and uh, that's it. So Samsung drives are not bad either. The, I don't like the... Okay, if I have a, a desktop that has a heatsink all day, every day, Samsung. But Samsung's can run a little bit hotter. And I don't like those in the MacBooks for that reason because they can run a little bit hotter. Um, and why is this not working? There we go. Why does this look like crap? All right, there we go. Okay, so this is an 820-3209 no backlight. I realized the problem relatively quickly. I mean, there's corrosion there, and the pins look like they're not connected anymore. But I think our backlight driver is going to be having some issues too because they usually are. They usually do. But maybe we got lucky. I don't know. It looks pretty clean. Anyway, let's try and figure out why this backlight is not working. So these are our backlight pins right there. Big surprise, the ones that are all burned and nasty. Um, so those are backlight pins. And most likely when we clean these, we're going to see that they are falling apart. And actually, no, they're fine which is very surprising, which raises my concern of something else. Aha. Something else like this. Cleaned water damage. And if just from just from a quick little just a quick little inspection, we can see that there is a pin on this chip between this resistor that is broken. The pro point is broken. So that's most likely why we're going to have no backlight. So this connector really doesn't look too bad. Um, I'm going to look inside too, and that doesn't look good. That looks like carbon from being burned. But let's see how this looks in the connector. And as far as that SSD goes, that SSD recommendation, yeah, this connector's fine. You guys see that? Looks fine inside. I'm not gonna replace it. It's fine. I'm just gonna touch it up. So, as far as my recommendation goes on SSDs, if that changes, I will make a dedicated video on what to use. 
um, but so far it's the SN 550s no compatibility issues with Big Sur yet um, so we'll see of course I'm probably gonna say this and the Monterey upgrade is gonna screw stuff up so I don't know we'll see that's why we have warranty So, one, this fuse has got to go. I'm hoping that's just a test point, and I'm pretty sure it is, or is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that one right there is just a test point, but this fuse has got to go. Get some flux around here. Also get some flux on my connector. I'm gonna start using my fume extractor. I've noticed I've been I've developed a cough that's not COVID. It's probably because I haven't used my fume extractor in like a year. And my lungs have a coating of Amtec NC559. Totally healthy. Good for health. So, I used to think, oh, this is just a fuse. I could just touch this up. Continuity will be fine. Yeah, I used to do that until I started getting devices back that I have did that on because the fuse blew. So, from now on, fuse looks like that. It gets replaced. This chip, this MOSFET, does not need to be replaced. This resistor, mm, this resistor I'm going to replace. I don't like how it just came off. So, that resistor, this fuse... Let's get this fuse off. Yeah, you can't leave something on the board that looks like this. Synchro, that's funny if it, it with the flux because I've had recently, more recently, um, my red blood cell count and hemoglobin, hematocrit, and everything have all been high. Um, but that almost makes sense because that can be caused by lack of oxygen. And if you're breathing flux all the time, I wonder if that inhibits the amount of oxygen that your lungs are able to absorb. So that actually makes somewhat sense. I'm curious to see what your sources are on that and how you know that because I'm um, that's intriguing because a couple of months ago I've had a high um, red blood cell count not crazy high but it was up there hematocrit hemoglobin everything I chalked left to dehydration ordered a new test and it was normal but interesting to know if the flux can do that I mean, if you have a thin coating of flux on your lungs, I could see how that's going to prevent air oxygen from being absorbed to your bloodstream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moment of silence for Caleb. He just said he's passing away. So, poor Caleb. He was a good employee. It sucks because he's not going to really reassemble this MacBook now. Exposure to mold, lead, and ionizing radiation. No comment on the last two. Totally not exposed to either, either of those. A 
All right, so we need a fuse. I mean, we need a resistor. Let me grab a dig out an 8203209, which is an ancient board. I probably don't even have one right here because it's been so long since I worked on one of these. Let's see if they're in bubble wrap. Is this an 8203209? Please be an 8203209. Not an 8203209. Alright, I have to walk to the front to get an 8203209 to steal parts off of. <sighs> Let's see here. This is a 3023. That won't work. This is a even older. This has the NVIDIA chip on it. Thing is, that's even older. This looks like it might be a 3209. This is a 30 And Caleb is about having a meltdown on a 2141 right now. So if you hear screaming, that's what it is. I'm going to dig more in this box for an 8203209. Here's an 8203209 How many times have I said 8203209 I've said 8203209 many times too many times actually Anyway let's get our resistor on the board I like how I'm lo uh, losing viewers when I say 8203209. What's whose is that? That's booting current. Yeah, I know it's working. Huh? Reassemble that 1707. I did. Oh, no, you didn't. No, 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 no. And the board is right there. Reassemble that one. That one's important. So I'm going to run a little wire. What time does punch come on? What time does punch come on, says Stephen G. Is chat saying they want me to punch Caleb? The 1707. Oh. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to run a little wire from the leg of this chip. Got to get the co enamel coating off of this, though. This looks pretty good. Get that out of there. 
Now the other thing I needed to do is just touch these pins up. That looks pretty good. Now the only thing left is to inspect the rest of the board to make sure that there's no other lingering signs of liquid. This capacitor is fine. All this stuff will be fine after ultrasonic. It just needs a little touching up. Totally fine. What, what tip do you use for the soldering station? This is a BC-50, I believe. BC-50 or BC-15? Look around here. Wi-Fi car does some corrosion. Nothing by our CPU. Now, the customer didn't complain of Wi-Fi issues, but that's a little bit concerning. No, that's cosmetic, but I still I don't want to leave that, so I'm going to address this. This has apparently been like working with no backlight for years, so. Yeah, that's just superficial. That'll be fine. And any by our RAM. BIOS looks good. Looks good. Backlight driver looks good. A little bit of stuff here. That is for Thunderbolt, which we know works because they use an external monitor, but still. Alright, now let's see if this thing works. Yep, connected to all monitor while using Synchro. Closure. Aw, oh, come on, why does it have to be in the bottom shelf? I hate when that happens. Who puts a MacBook in the bottom shelf? Yeah, I haven't worked on a 3209 in over a year, John. A little bit of corrosion in this connector. In this cable, I mean. I'm gonna try and take a day off it's on s this weekend. I, I've been working pretty much seven days a week for a few weeks now, so. Thank you, Steven. This workspace is honestly a bit of a mess right now, and it's kind of embarrassing, but it gets the job done. So I have our charger plugged in. We have a spinning fan, and hopefully I get backlight in a flashing question mark folder. That is a beautiful backlight. Look at that. That is a beautiful backlight. Let's wait for it to give us image. 
Come on, flashing question mark. The reason why I say flashing question mark is because this machine does not have an SSD installed in it at the moment. Flashing question mark. Come on. Dual core i5 from 2012. What can you expect? It's a throttle i5 too because the IO board is unplugged. There we go. That is a flashing question mark. So this should be fixed. And with that being said, that is it for this stream. And I will see you guys in the next video, which will be hopefully whenever I have time to edit what's on this drive right here. So 